The Tarukural Tamil, Tarukural literally sacred verses, or shortly the Kural, is a classic Tamil text consisting of 1,330 couplets or curls, dealing with the everyday virtues of an individual. It is one of the two oldest works now extant in Tamil literature in their entirety, the other being the Tolkapiyam. Considered one of the greatest works ever written on ethics and morality, chiefly secular ethics, it is known for its universality and non-denominational nature. It was authored by Valuvar, also known in full as Thiruvalavar. The text has been dated variously from 300 BCE to 7th century CE. The traditional accounts describe it as the last work of the Third Sangam, but linguistic analysis suggests a later date of 450 to 500 CE traditionally praised as the Universal Veda and the Universal Code of Conduct. The Kuril emphasizes on the vital principles of non-violence, moral vegetarianism or veganism, human brotherhood, absence of desires, path of righteousness and truth, and so forth, besides covering a wide range of subjects such as moral codes of rulers, friendship, agriculture, knowledge and wisdom, sobriety, love, and domestic life. The work is commonly quoted in vegetarian conferences, both in India and abroad. Considered as chef d'oeuvre of both Indian and world literature, the Kuril is one of the most important works in the Tamil language and is often called the masterpiece of Tamil literature. This is reflected in some of the other names by which the text is given by, such as the work of three books, Modern Veda, Divine Work, Faultless Word, and Tamil Veda. The Kuril has influenced several scholars across the ethical, social, political, economical, religious, philosophical, and spiritual spheres. Authors influenced by the Kuril include Ilango Adigal, Kambar, Leo Tolstoy, Mahatma Gandhi, Albert Schweitzer, Constantius Joseph Beshi, Karl Grahl, George Uglo Pope, Alexander Piatigorsky, and Yu Shi, many of whom have translated the work into their languages. Translated into at least 40 languages as of 2014, the Kuril is one of the most widely translated works in the world. Because the life, culture and ethics of the Tamils are considered to be solely defined in terms of the values set by the Kuril, the government and the people of Tamil Nadu alike uphold the text with utmost reverence. Along with the Gita, the Kuril is a prime candidate nominated to be the National Book of India, for which a declaration was passed at the Tamil Nadu Assembly in 2006. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The term Tirukural is a compound word made of two individual terms, Tiru and Kural. Tiru is an honorific Tamil term that corresponds to the universally Indian, Sanskrit term Shri meaning, holy, sacred, excellent, honorable, and beautiful. The term Tiru has as many as 19 different meanings. Kural means something that is, short, concise, and abridged. Etymologically, Kuril is the shortened form of Kuril Patu, which is derived from Kuruvan Patu, one of the two Tamil poetic forms explained by Tolkapiyam, the other one being Nejavan Patu. According to Winslow, Kuril is used as a literary term to indicate a metrical line of two feet, or a distich or couplet of short lines, the first of four and the second of three feet. Thus, Tarukural literally comes to mean sacred couplets. The Kuril is unique among ancient works that it did not have a name nor did it have any mention of the author's name in it at the time of its release at the ruler's court at the city of Madurai, the seat of the third Tamil Sangam. The author used the title Muppal, meaning, three divisions, to present it to the king, since the work was written about the first three of the four ancient Indian aims in life, known as Purusharthas, viz., virtue, wealth and love, with the fourth aim, namely, salvation moksha, implicitly said in the last five chapters of Book I remaining nameless for several years after its writing, the work came to be referred to by various names in the centuries that followed. Nine traditional names had already been in use to refer to the book during the time of writing of the Tiruvayuva Malai, a eulogy written on the Kuril by various poets between the 1st and 11th centuries CE. Nevertheless, the title Muppal remained the work's primary name until the 13th century CE. It is estimated that the Kuril has historically been known by as many as 44 names given at various periods over the millennia, making it one of the numerously titled works. Topic. Organization of the work The Kuril is structured into 133 chapters, each containing 10 couplets or curls, for a total of 1,330 couplets. 
The 133 chapters are grouped into three parts, or books. Book 1, Aratupal, Aratupal Book of Virtue Dharma, dealing with virtues independent of the surroundings chapters 1 to 38. Book 2, Porupal, Porupal Book of Polity Artha, dealing with virtues with respect to the surroundings chapters 39 to 108. Book 3, Kamatupal, Kamatupal Book of Love Kama, dealing with virtues involved in conjugal human love chapters 109-133 Each curl or couplet contains exactly seven words, known as CIRS, with four CIRS on the first line and three on the second, following the curl meter. A circle is a single or a combination of more than one Tamil word. For example, the term thirukural is a circle formed by combining the two words thiru and curl. The book on Aram virtue contains 380 verses, that of Poral wealth has 700 and that of Inbam or Kamam love has 250. Aram refers to ethical values for the holistic pursuit of life, Poral refers to wealth obtained in ethical manner guided by Aram, and Inbam or Kamam refers to pleasure and fulfillment of one's desires, also in an Aram-driven manner. Although Poral and Inbam are desirable pursuits in human life, they both need to be regulated by Aram. One must remain unattached to wealth and possessions, which can either be transcended or sought with detachment and awareness. Similarly, pleasure needs to be fulfilled consciously and without harming anyone. It is said that there exists an inherent tension between Poral and Inbam. Thus, wealth and pleasure must be pursued with an action with renunciation, which is nothing but an Aram driven action that is craving free. In order to resolve this tension, the overall organization of the Kuril text is based on seven ideals prescribed for a commoner besides observations of love. This includes 40 couplets on God, rain, ascetics, and virtue, 200 on domestic virtue, 140 on higher yet most fundamental virtue based on grace, benevolence and compassion, 250 on royalty, 100 on ministers of state, 220 on essential requirements of administration, 130 on morality, both positive and negative, and 250 on human love and passion. Date The curl has been dated variously from 300 BCE to 7th century CE. According to traditional accounts, it was the last work of the Third Sangam, and was subjected to a divine test which it passed. The scholars who believe this tradition, such as Somasundara Bharathiyar and M. Rajamandakam, date the text to as early as 300 BCE. Historian K. K. Pillay assigned it to the early 1st century CE. Linguist Camille Zavellabiel is certain that Tarukural does not belong to the Sangam period, and dates it to somewhere between 450 and 500 CE. His estimate is based on the language of the text, its allusions to the earlier works, and its borrowing from some Sanskrit treatises. Zavellabiel notes that the text features several grammatical innovations, that are absent in the older Sangam literature. The text also features a higher number of Sanskrit loan words compared to these older texts. According to Zavellabil, besides being part of the ancient Tamil literary tradition, the author was also a part of the one great Indian ethical, didactic tradition, as a few of his verses seem to be translations of the verses in Sanskrit texts such as Manavadharmasastra and Kautilya's Arthasastra. S. Vayyapuri Pillai assigned the work to C. 650 CE, believing that it borrowed from some Sanskrit works of 6th century CE. Zavellabil disagrees with this assessment, pointing out that some of the words that Pillai believed to be Sanskrit loan words have now been proved to be of Dravidian origin by Thomas Burrow and Murray Barnson Emino. In the face of incessant debate on the precise date, taking the latest of the estimated dates, the Tamil Nadu government officially declared 31 BCE as the year of Valuvar, as suggested by Mary Malai Adigal, on 18 January 1935, adding Valuvar year to the calendar. Topic. Author Very little is known about Valuvar, the author of the Kuril. In his work The Smile of Murugan, Czech scholar Camille Zavellabiel cites a tradition suggesting he was an outcast by birth, the issue of a union between a Brahmin man and a pariah woman. Some think that he was a weaver by caste. He is believed to have been born in the temple town of Mylapore, a locality within the present-day Chennai, and is said to be a simple weaver by profession who wrote the curls with divine inspiration. He was married to Vasuki. 
The first instance of the author's name mentioned as Valuvar is found to be several centuries later in a song of praise called the Tiruvayuva Malai. Just as the book remained unnamed at the time of its presentation at the court of the ruler, the author too did not name himself in the writing of the book. Over the centuries that followed, people started calling the work Tarukural and its author as Thiruvalivar. Monsieur Ariel, who translated the Kuril text into French, thus praised it as the book without a name by an author without a name. There are also claims and counter claims as to the authorship of the book and to the exact number of couplets written by Valuvar. Valuvar is thought to have belonged to either Jainism or Hinduism. This can be observed in his treatment of the concept of ahimsa or non-violence, which is the principal concept of both the religions. Valuvar's treatment of the chapters on moral vegetarianism or veganism and non-killing reflects the Jain precepts, where these are stringently enforced. The three parts that the Kuril is divided into, namely, Aram virtue, Poral wealth, and Inbam love, aiming at attaining Vidu ultimate salvation, follow, respectively, the four foundations of Hinduism, namely, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. His mentioning of God Vishnu in couplets 610 and 1103 and Goddess Lakshmi in couplets 167, 408, 519, 565, 568, 616, and 617 suggests the Vaishnavite beliefs of Aluvar. Other Eastern beliefs of Valuvar found in the book include previous birth and rebirth, seven births, and some ancient Indian astrological concepts, among others. Despite using these contemporary religious concepts of his time, Valuvar has limited the usage of these terms to a metaphorical sense to explicate the fundamental virtues and ethics, without enforcing any of these religious beliefs in practice. This, chiefly, has made the treatise earn the title Ulaga Padu Mare the Universal Scripture. There is also the recent claim by Kanyakumari Historical and Cultural Research Center KHCRC that Valuvar was a king who ruled Valuvanadu in the hilly tracts of the Kanyakumari district of Tamil Nadu. The only other book that is attributed to Valuvar other than the Kuril text is Nanaveti, a text that deals with spiritual aspects, due to which the author is also known as Nanavetian. Structural plan of the work Having written by a single author, the Kuril literature reveals a single structural plan. The Kuril is not an anthology for there is not any later additions to the text. According to Camille Zavelabiel, the content of the Kuril text is "...undoubtedly patterned." The entire work has been structured very carefully without an allowance for any structural gaps in the text such that every couplet remains indispensable for the structured whole. Thus, one can find two distinct meanings for every couplet in the Kuril literature, namely, a structural one and a proverbial one. In their isolated form, that is, when removed from the content structure, the couplets lose their structural meaning, the most important of the two, with the isolated distiches still remaining charming and interesting in themselves. This simply makes the isolated couplet a wise saying or a moral maxim, a literary proverb in perfect form, possessing, in varying degree, the prosodic and rhetoric qualities of gnomic poetry. On the other hand, within the content structure, the couplets acquire their structural meaning in relation to other couplets, forming higher patterns, and finally, in relation to the entire work, they acquire perfection in the totality of their structure. According to Pavalariru Purunchithiranar, Valuvar has employed 28 different methods of conveying thoughts in the Kuril text. <laughs> Substance of the work Written with the contemporary society in view and marked by pragmatic idealism, the Kuril text is unique among the ancient literature in terms of both its poetic and its intellectual accomplishments. In poetic terms, it fuses verse and aphoristic form in diction in a «pithy, vigorous, forceful and terse» manner. In intellectual terms, it is written on the basis of secular ethics, expounding a universal, moral and practical attitude towards life. Unlike religious scriptures, the Kuril refrains from talking of hopes and promises of the other-worldly life. Rather it speaks of the ways of cultivating one's mind to achieve the other-worldly bliss in the present life itself. By occasionally referring to bliss beyond the worldly life, Valuvar equates what can be achieved in humanly life with what may be attained thereafter. Only in a couple of introductory chapters chapters 1 and 3 does Valuvar sound religious. 
Even here, he maintains a tone that could be acceptable to people of all faiths. It is believed that Voluvar composed every chapter in response to a request to produce ten best couplets on a particular subject. Nevertheless, he seldom shows any concern as to what similes and superlatives he used earlier while writing on other subjects, purposely allowing for some repetition and mild contradictions in ideas one can find in the Kuril text. Despite knowing its seemingly contradictory nature from a purist point of view, Voluvar employs this method to emphasize the importance of the given code of ethic. Following are some of the instances where Voluvar employs contradictions to expound the virtues. While in Chapter 93 Voluvar writes on the evils of intoxication, in Chapter 109 he uses the same to show the sweetness of love by saying love is sweeter than wine. To the question, what is wealth of all wealth? Voluvar points out to two different things, namely, grace and hearing in regard to the virtues one should follow dearly even at the expense of other virtues, Voluvar points to veracity curl 297, not coveting another's wife curl 150, and not being called a slanderer curl 181. In essence, however, in Chapter 33 he crowns non-killing as the foremost of all virtues, pushing even the virtue of veracity to the second place curl 323. Whereas he says that one can eject what is natural or inborn in him curl 376, he indicates that one can overcome the inherent natural flaws by getting rid of laziness curl 609. While in Chapter 7 he asserts that the greatest gain men can obtain is by their learned children curl 61, in Chapter 13 he says that it is that which is obtained by self-control nevertheless, the basic ideas of Voluvar is found in the introductory section of the curl, which includes the first four chapters of the text. Voluvar begins this portion with the invocation of God and continues to praise the rain for being the vitalizer of all life forms on earth and describe the qualities of a righteous person, before concluding the introduction by emphasizing the value of aram or virtue. Voluvar extols rain next only to God for it provides food and serves as the basis of a stable economic life by aiding in agriculture, which Voluvar asserts is the most important economic activity later in Book 2 of the Kuril text. The entire writing of all the three books of the Kuril text bases Aram or Dharma as its cornerstone, which resulted in the Kuril being referred to simply as Aram. Contrary to what the Manumriti says, Voluvar holds that Aram is common for all, irrespective of whether the person is a bearer of palanquin or the writer in it. The greatest of virtues according to Voluvar is non-killing, followed by veracity, which he plainly indicates in couplet 323, and the two greatest sins that Voluvar feels very strongly are ingratitude and meat-eating. As observed by P. S. Sundaram in the introduction to his work, while all other sins may be redeemed, but never ingratitude, Voluvar couldn't understand how anyone could wish to fatten himself by feeding on the fat of others. The Kuril differs from every other work on morality in that it follows ethics, surprisingly a divine one, even in its Book of Love. In the words of Gopal Krishna Gandhi, Voluvar maintains his views on personal morality even in the Book of Love, where one can normally expect greater poetic leniency, by describing the hero as a one-woman man, without concubines. Topic. Comparison with other ancient literature Unlike the mystic philosopher of Lao Tzu or the law-giving prophets of the Judeo-Christian tradition, Voluvar remained a philosopher concerning with the day-to-day -day conduct of a common individual. Scholars compares the codes of virtue, nobility, propriety, just governance, conduct, social obligations, self-control, education and knowledge with other ancient thoughts such as the Confucian sayings in Lun Yu, Hitopadisa, Panchatantra, Manumriti, Tirumandaram, Book of Proverbs in the Bible, sayings of the Buddha in Dhammapada, and the ethical works of Persian origin such as Gulistan and Bustan, in addition to the holy books of various religions. Similarities with ancient Indian literature Several ancient Indian literature such as Manumriti, Kautilya's Arthashastra, Kamandaka's Nitasara bear likeness with the second book Poral, the book on wealth, of the Kuril text, while Vatsyayana's Kamasutra shares similarities with Inbam, the third book of the Kuril text the book on love. However, the attitude and approach of Voluvar in expounding the virtues remain entirely different from any of these contemporary works. 
While the Artha Shastra is based on subtle statecraft, the Poral of the Kuril text bases morality and benevolence as its cornerstones. The social hierarchies and discrimination found in Manumriti are contrasted with Valivar's concept of universal brotherhood and oneness of humanity. Unlike Kama Sutra, which is all about eros and techniques of sexual fulfillment, the Kuril text of Inbam remains a poetic appreciation of flowering human love as explicated by the Sangam period's concept of intimacy, known as Aham in the Tamil literary tradition. <laughs> Similarities with Confucian thoughts The Kuril text and the Confucian sayings recorded in the classic analects of Chinese called Lun Yu, meaning, sacred sayings, resemble each other in many ways. Both Voluvar and Confucius focused on the behaviors and moral conducts of a common person. Similar to Voluvar, Confucius advocated legal justice embracing human principles, courtesy, and filial piety, besides the virtues of benevolence, righteousness, loyalty and trustworthiness as foundations of life. Incidentally, Voluvar differed from Confucius in two respects. Firstly, unlike Confucius, Voluvar was also a poet. Secondly, Confucius did not deal with the subject of conjugal love, for which Voluvar devoted an entire division in his work. <laughs> Publication of the work Save for the highly educated circle of scholars and elites outside the Tamil land, the Kuril remained largely unknown to the outside world for close to one and a half millennia. It had been passed on as word of mouth from parents to their children and from preceptors to their students for generations within the Tamil-speaking regions of South India. It was not until 1595 when the first translation of the work appeared in Malayalam that the work became known to the wider circle outside the Tamil-speaking communities. The work first came to print in 1812, with the Kuril text getting published in Tamil, chiefly by the efforts of the then collector of Madras Francis White Ellis, who established the Chennai Kalvi Sangam. It was published by Thanjai Gyanaprakash. It was only in 1835 that Indians were permitted to establish printing press. Thus, the Kuril became the first book to be published in Tamil. Soon, Mahalinga Iyer published the first 24 chapters of the Kuril with commentaries for the first time. In 1850, the complete work of the Kuril was published with commentaries by Vedagiri Mudalir, who published a revised version later in 1853. This publication was later used by Valalar Ramalinga Adigal to teach the Kuril to the masses. In December 2018, the first edition of the Kuril text in Tamil Brahmi script, the script that was in vogue during Valivar's time, was published by the International Institute of Tamil Studies. IITS. This made the Kuril text available for the first time in a script in which the work might have originally written probably during the 1st century BCE or 1st century CE. Topic: <laughs> Commentaries and translations. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Commentaries. The Kuril is arguably the most reviewed of all works in Tamil literature, and almost every notable scholar has written commentaries explanation in prose or verse on it. According to R. Ilankumaran, there are four requisites necessary to write commentaries to the Kuril text. The awareness that the meaning of everything that is written in the Kuril text is available in the work itself. A workable knowledge of the Tolkapiyam. A thorough knowledge of the Sangam literature and landscape. A practical knowledge of how things work in their nature. There have been several commentaries written on the Kuril over the centuries. Many poets of the first few centuries of the Common Era used various Kuril couplets to illustrate their works. These include Ilango Adigal, Sethalai Sathanar, Sekular, Kambar. These can be considered the first commentaries to the Kuril text, albeit in verse form and incomplete. In the centuries that followed, numerous commentators of various other works employed Kuril couplets to elaborate their ideas, providing explanations to the couplets in the process, both in verse and in prose forms. These include Adiyarku Nalar, Nachinarkiniyar, Mayalayanathar, and Shankara Namachavayar. Exclusive commentaries on the Kuril text started appearing much later. There were at least ten medieval commentaries written by pioneer poets of which only six are available today. 
The ten canonical medieval commentators include Manakudavar, Darumar, Damodar, Nakar, Paradiyar, Tirumalayar, Malar, Kaliparamal or Parai Purumal, Kaalingar, and Parimalajagar, all of whom lived between the 10th and the 13th centuries CE. Of these, only the works of Manakudavar, Paridi, Kaalingar, Parai Purumal, and Parimalajagar are available today. The works of Darumar, Damathar, and Nakar are only partially available. The commentaries by Tirumalayar and Malar are lost. The pioneer among these commentators are Parimalajagar and Manakudavar. Besides these, there are three more medieval commentaries written by unknown authors. One of them was published under the title, Palaya Urai, meaning ancient commentary, while the second one was based on Paradiyas commentary. The third one was published in 1991 under the title, Jaina Urai. Meaning Jaina Commentary by Saraswati Mahal Library in Thanjavur. Following these medieval commentaries, there are at least 21 Venba commentaries to the Kuril, including Somasar Mudumoli Venba, Muriyesar Mudanari Venba, Savasiva Venba, Iranjesa Venba, and Vadimalai Venba, all of which are considered commentaries in verse form. Several modern commentaries started appearing in the 19th and the 20th centuries. Some of the commentaries of the 20th century include those by Ayyuthi Thass, V. O. Chidambaram Pillai, Thiru V. Ka, Bharathidasan, M. Varadarahan, Namakal Kavanyar, Thirukuralar V. Munasami, Devanaya Pavanar, M. Karananithi, and Solomon Papaya. Translations The first translation known of the Kuril text is a Malayalam translation that appeared in about 1595. However, the manuscript remained unpublished and was first reported by the annual report of the Cochin Archaeological Department for the year 1933-1934. The Christian missionaries who came to India during the colonial era, inspired by the similarities of the Christian ideals found in the Kuril, started translating the text into various European languages. The Latin translation of the Kuril, the first of the translations into European languages, was made by Constantius Joseph Beshi in 1730. However, he translated only the first two parts, viz., virtue and wealth, leaving out the section on love assuming that it would be inappropriate for a Christian missionary to do so. The first French translation was brought about by an unknown author by about 1767 that went unnoticed. The first available French version was by Monsieur Ariel in 1848. Again, he did not translate the whole work but only parts of it. The first German translation was made by Dr. Karl Grahl, who published it in 1856 both at London and Leipzig. Grahl's translation was unfortunately incomplete due to his premature death. The first, and incomplete, English translations were made by N. E. Kindersley in 1794 and then by Francis White Ellis in 1812. While Kindersley translated a selection of the Kuril text, Ellis translated 120 couplets in all—69 of them in verse and 51 in prose. W. H. Drew translated the first two parts in prose in 1840 and 1852, respectively. It contained the original Tamil text of the Kuril, Parimalazhagar's commentary, Ramanuja Kaviriyar's amplification of the commentary and Drew's English prose translation. However, Drew was able to translate only 630 couplets, and the remaining were made by John Lazarus, a native missionary. Like Beshi, Drew did not translate the part on love. The first complete English translation of the Kuril was the one by George Uglo Pope in 1886, which brought the Kuril to the Western world. By the end of the 20th century, there were about 24 translations of the Kuril in English alone, by both native and non native scholars, including those by V. V. S. Iyar, K. M. Balasubramaniam, Shudananda Bharati, A. Chakravarti, M. S. Purnalingam Pillai, C. Rajagopalachari, P. S. Sundaram, V. R. Ramachandra Dikshitar, G. Van Makanathan, Kasturi Srinivasan, S. N. Sriramadesakan, and K. R. Srinivasa Iyengar. At present, the Kuril has been translated into 37 languages. It is also said that the work has also been translated into Vagri Buli, the language of the Nurakoravas, a tribal community in Tamil Nadu. It is the most translated Tamil literature and also the most translated non-religious text of India. Translational difficulties With a highly compressed prosodic form, the Kuril text employs the intricately complex Kuril Venba meter, known for its eminent suitability to gnomic poetry. 
This form, which Zavelabiel calls a marvel of brevity and condensation, is closely connected with the structural properties of the Tamil language and has historically presented extreme difficulties to its translators. Talking about translating the Kuril into other languages, Herbert Arthur Popley observes, It is impossible in any translation to do justice to the beauty and force of the original. Zavelabiel claims that it is impossible to truly appreciate the maxims found in the Kuril couplets through a translation but rather that the Kuril has to be read and understood in its original Tamil form. Besides these inherent difficulties in translating the Kuril, some scholars have attempted to either read their own ideas into the Kuril couplets or deliberately misinterpret the message to make it conform to their preconceived notions. The Latin translation by Father Beshi, for instance, contains several such mistranslations noticed by modern scholars. According to V. Ramasamy, Beshi is purposely distorting the message of the original when he renders Piravali as the sea of miserable life and the phrase Piraviparunkadal as sea of this birth which has been translated by others as the sea of many births. Beshi means thus those who swim the vast sea of miseries. The concept of rebirth or many births for the same soul is contrary to Christian principle and belief. Memorials The Kuril text and its author have been highly venerated over the centuries. In the early 16th century, a temple was constructed in Mylapore, Chennai, in honor of Aluvar. It was extensively renovated in the 1970s. There are also temples for Valuvar at Periya Kalayamputhar, Thandi, Kanjor Thattanpati, Sanapathi, and Vilvarani. In 1976, Valuvar Khatam, a monument to honor the Kuril literature and its author, was constructed in Chennai. The chief element of the monument includes a 39 m high chariot, a replica of the chariot in the temple town of Tiruvarur, and it contains a life size statue of Valuvar. All the 1,330 verses of the Kuril text are inscribed on bas-relief in the corridors in the main hall. Statues of Valuvar have been erected across the globe, including the ones at Kanyakumari, Chennai, Bengaluru, Haridwar, Puttalam, Singapore, and London. The tallest of these is the 133 feet .6 meters stone statue of Valuvar erected in 2000 atop a small island in the town of Kanyakumari on the southernmost tip of the Indian Peninsula, at the confluence of the Bay of Bengal, the Arabian Sea, and the Indian Ocean. This statue is currently India's 25th tallest. Reception While it has been widely acknowledged that Valuvar was of Jain origin and the Kuril to its most part was inspired from Jain, Hindu and other ancient Indian philosophies, owing to its universality and non-denominational nature, almost every religious group in India and across the world, including Christianity, has claimed the work for itself. For example, G. U. Pope speaks of the book as an echo of the Sermon on the Mount. In the introduction to his English translation of the Kuril, Pope even claims. I cannot feel any hesitation in saying that the Christian scriptures were among the sources from which the poet derived his inspiration. However, the chapters on the ethics of moral vegetarianism, chapter 26, and non-killing, chapter 33, which the Kuril emphasizes emphatically unlike the Bible or other Abrahamic religious texts, suggest that the ethics of the Kuril is rather a reflection of the Jaina moral code than of Christian ethics. J. M. Nalaswamy Pillai dismisses Pope's statement as an absurd literary anachronism, citing the Kuril text as a stumbling block which can browbeat the most sublime ideas of Christian morality. The Kuril is praised for its universality across the globe. The ancient Tamil poet Avayar observed, Valuvar pierced an atom and injected seven seas into it and compressed it into what we have today as Kuril. The Russian philosopher Alexander Piatigorsky called it chef d'oeuvre of both Indian and world literature, due not only to the great artistic merits of the work but also to the lofty humane ideas permeating it which are equally precious to the people all over the world, of all periods and countries." G. U. Pope called its author, "...a bard of universal man." According to Albert Schweitzer, there hardly exists in the literature of the world a collection of maxims in which we find so much of lofty wisdom." Leo Tolstoy called it, "...the Hindu Kuril," and Mahatma Gandhi called it, "...a textbook of indispensable authority on moral life," and went on to say, "...the maxims of Valuvar have touched my soul." 
There is none who has given such a treasure of wisdom like him." Sir A. Grant said, "...humility, charity and forgiveness of injuries, being Christian qualities, are not described by Aristotle. Now these three are everywhere forcibly inculcated by the Tamil moralist." Edward Jewitt Robinson said that the curl contains all things and there is nothing which it does not contain. Reverend John Lazarus said, "...no Tamil work can ever approach the purity of the curl. It is a standing repute to modern Tamil." According to K. M. Munshi, "...thirukural is a treatise par excellence on the art of living." Sri Aurobindo stated, "...thirukural is gnomic poetry, the greatest in planned conception and force of execution ever written in this kind." Monsieur Ariel, who translated and published the third part of the Curl to French in 1848, called it a masterpiece of Tamil literature, one of the highest and purest expressions of human thought. Quote, According to Rev. Emmons E. White, the Rukural is a synthesis of the best moral teachings of the world. Rajaji commented, It is the gospel of love and a code of soul luminous life. The whole of human aspiration is epitomized in this immortal book, a book for all ages. Zakir Hussain, former president of India, said, Thirukural is a treasure house of worldly knowledge, ethical guidance and spiritual wisdom. Along with Nalatiyar, another work on ethics and morality from the Sangam period, the Kuril is praised for its veracity. An age-old Tamil maxim has it that Banyan and Neem maintain oral health, four and two maintain moral health. Where? Four and two refer to the quatrains and couplets of Nalatiyar and the Kuril, respectively. Topic in popular culture. With the rediscovery of the image of Valuvar in 1959, the portrait of the author with matted hair and a flowing beard, as drawn by artist K. R. Venugopal Sharma in 1960, was accepted by the state and central governments as the standardized version. It soon became a popular and the standard portrait of the poet. In 1964, the image was unveiled in the Indian Parliament by the then President of India Zakir Hussain. In 1967, the Tamil Nadu government passed an order stating that the image of Valuvar should be present in all government offices across the state of Tamil Nadu. The curl does not appear to have been set in music by Valuvar. However, a number of musicians have set it to tune and several singers have rendered it in their concerts. Modern composers who have tuned the curl couplets include Mayuram Viswanatha Sastri and Ramani Bharadwaj. Singers who have performed full-fledged terukural concerts include M. M. Dandapani Desikar and Chidambaram C. S. J. Raman. Madurai Somasundaram and Sanjay Subramanian are other people who have given musical rendering of the Kuril. Mayuram Vishwanatha Shastri set all the verses to music in the early 20th century. In January 2016, Chitravina N. Ravakiran set the entire 1330 verses to music in a record time of 16 hours. It can be said that it was cinema that made the general public hear Tarukural being sung. For instance, K. Balachander's Kavithalaya Productions opened its films with the very first couplet of the Kuril sung in the background. Several Tarukural conferences were conducted in the 20th century, most famously by Tarukural V. Munasamy in 1941 and by Perry R. E. V. Ramasamy in 1949. The 1949 conference, headed by Thiru. V. Ka, T. P. Meenakshisandaram, and A. Chakravarti, was held for two days on 15 and 16 January, with several scholars and celebrities participating in it, including S. Somasundara Bharati, Kanhasami Mutalayar, Tarukiralar Munasami, C. Alakavanar, S. Muttaya Mutalayar, K. Apadurai, Pulavar Kulandai, actor N. S. Krishnan, and the later day chief minister of the state C. N. Anadurai. In 1818, the then collector of Madras Francis White Ellis, who had a high regard for Valuvar and his work, issued a gold coin bearing Valivar's image when he was made in charge of the Madras treasury and mint. In the late 19th century, the South Indian Saint Valalar launched a movement in Vadalar to teach Tarukural to the masses. In 1968, the Tamil Nadu government made it mandatory to display a curl couplet in all government buses. The train running a distance of 2,921 km between Kanyakumari and New Delhi is named by the Indian Railways as the Tirukural Express. Kuril also remains an integral part of the lifestyle of Tamil-speaking populations that it is propagated through various means such as music, dance, street shows, recitals, activities, and puzzles and riddles.
Topic: <laughs> Legacy. The Kuril remains one of the most influential texts of ancient India and the chief text of the Tamil language, influencing generations of scholars at a pan-Indian expanse. The work had influenced people from all walks of lives, which can be inferred from the parallels found in the literatures of various languages within the Indian subcontinent. Although translations of the work into other Indian languages were not available until at least the 16th century, the work had been studied by other language scholars for centuries before the foreign invasion of India. With its translations into European languages starting from the early 18th century, Kuril began to have a global influence. Besides numerous poets of the Sangam era including Avirai and Kapilar, authors influenced by the Kuril include Ilango Adigal, Sethalai Sathanar, Sekular, Kambar, Leo Tolstoy, Mahatma Gandhi, Albert Schweitzer, Valalar, Monsieur Ariel, Constantius Joseph Beshi, Karl Grahl, August Friedrich Kammerer, Nathaniel Edward Kindersley, Francis White Ellis, Charles E. Gover, George Uglo Pope, Vinoba Bhavi, Alexander Piatigorsky, A. P. J. Abdul Kalam, and Yu Shi. Many of these authors have translated the work into their languages. Historically, the Kuril experienced a few centuries of hiatus soon after its writing, dubbed the Dark Age, following which it enjoyed a revival period when the teachings of the Kuril started to influence people greatly. A notable example was from the period of Karakalan during the 1st century CE, when the Chola ruler was influenced by the Kuril to undertake several historically significant agricultural reforms, including reclaiming lands and building dams. Another example was during the Pallava dynasty when the people had to face the Calabra invasion around 250 CE. Kuril remains the only work that was honored with an exclusive work of compiled paeans in the Sangam literature, authored by 55 different poets, including legendary ones. Kuril also remains the most cited work during the Sangam era and the most quoted Tamil work ever since. Classical works such as the Purananuru, Manamekalai, Salapathakaram, Pariya Puranam, and Kamba Ramayanam all cite the Kuril by various names, bestowing numerous titles to the work that was originally untitled by its author. In Kamba Ramayanam, poet Kambar has used as many as 1100 couplets of the Kuril. The Kuril text was first included in the school syllabus by the then British government. However, only select 275 couplets have been taught to the schoolchildren between 3 to 12 standards. Attempts to include the Kuril literature as a compulsory subject in schools were ineffective in the decades following independence. On 26 April 2016, the Madras High Court directed the state government to include all the 108 chapters of the books of Aram and Poral of the Kuril text in school syllabus for classes V through 12 from the academic year 2017-2018, to build a nation with moral values, the court observed. No other philosophical or religious work has such moral and intellectual approach to problems of life. The Kuril has inspired many to pursue the path of ahimsa or non violence. Leo Tolstoy was inspired by the concept of non violence found in the Kuril when he read a German version of the book, who in turn instilled the concept in Mahatma Gandhi through his A letter to a Hindu when young Gandhi sought his guidance. Gandhi then took to studying the Kuril in prison, which eventually culminated in his starting the non-violence movement to fight against the British. It is said that Gandhi had learnt Tamil only to read the original text of the Kuril. Vallalar was inspired by the Kuril at a young age and spent his whole life promoting compassion and non-violence, emphasizing on a compassionate, non-killing, and meatless way of life. Topic. See also. Topic Notes Equals equals citations <laughs>